on. So today I'm gonna sow some herbs, whoops, uh, and some more beetroot. So we're in second week of June now, and um, yeah, I need to replenish my parsley, my dill, and my coriander. And I want time as well. <laughs> Who doesn't want time? But I do want time on the allotment. It's a perennial, and these seeds are old and should have been sowed by 2017. So I don't think they're gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a try. And I'm gonna also do some more beetroot. So the technique I use for a lot of seed uh, is multi-sowing. So this would be a little multi-sowing 101, I guess. It's very, very basic. Um, so I'll just move you down so you can see. Right, so I've got two trays here. So this is just um, multi-purpose compost. And this is um, a module tray. This is made of rubber, it's very good. If you have, uh, if you don't have lots of plastic trays already, this is a good place to start because it's rubber, it's a uh, more re renewable. And uh, this is from a uh, certified source. So it's pretty good. Um, Plasticfreegardening.com it's from. No, uh, no ad or anything, it's just, pretty good company for that. Uh, so I have here just general compost mixed with uh, vermiculite and that is to make it a bit poorer, uh, improve drainage and also somehow work for moisture retention. Don't ask me how. So I reuse the compost from seed trays I've used previously so there might be some seedlings that hadn't germinated at the time but are now coming up so you just have to look out for those. And obviously, try not to sow the same thing following each other because then you might not be able to tell the difference what is what. And this is um, this is already a bit damp compost, which makes it a bit easier to work with. So I try to just put it in firmly. use bigger size trays as well with bigger modules in them and that would mean that the they would hold moisture longer but I have been told that seeds like to be tight and they like to grow small like this and they grow really well the only thing to watch out for with these rubber trays is that they get very hot so if they're in the Sun in a hot greenhouse because they're so small and they're black, they dry out quite quick, so... Um, but it's worth, it's worth it, just, you, you know, you have to water every day, that's just the way it is. All right, now let's move this away. All right, so, just make an indentation in each where the seeds can go. So with multi-sewing, um, uh, Charles Dowding is where I learned everything. He has on his website, he has um, a list of what vegetables work, multi sowing, what don't, and how many you would put in. So for coriander here, this is um, coriander cruiser. I put three in each, and then you're expecting plant out a little clump of two from that, so. And uh, the in here. Like a little marker in there. And um, dill, and it's the same with that. So, the only problem I find with doing multiple different things in a tray like this is that obviously they take different amount of time germinating. So in spring that was a bit of an issue because um, I like to keep them in the house for a few days until they germinated. Um, but I had a tray where there was radish, two rows of radish and then some herbs and the radish obviously germinated super quick. 
So then I had to move it out into the greenhouse so they get the light that they need to grow on, otherwise it just gets so leggy. Uh, but that meant then that the um, herbs took forever to germinate because they were in the colder temperature, uh, which they didn't really like. Um, but otherwise, I feel like I've got very good uh, experience with these, with this way of, of growing. So then you can go from this size module, which is very small, straight out into the bed if the space is ready. If it isn't ready, this is parsley. Um, you can pot them on and then plant them out at a later stage. But it's good to try to keep the timings right so that you don't end up doing a lot of extra work. Because basically this way it saves you a hell of a lot of time, I find. So there's some things that I don't obviously um, multi-sow and in that, and if that's the case, then I like to sow things in a seed tray instead and then prick out into a module. Oh, we'll do the time first. Right, let's see. This seed, as I said, is very old. I not sure. I should have also been sown, I think last sowing day is May, but you know, always give it a go. These seeds are selected from the finest strains and tested in laboratory and trial gardens to ensure the best results. <laughs> That's great. We'll see. We'll see. We're putting it to the test now. Whoop. All right, so because I wouldn't necessarily multi sow time, uh, I have no experience growing it. I mean, it's perennial, so you usually just buy it. But they do say that if you grow it yourself from seed, it's much uh, better at dealing with growing your growing conditions, obviously. So, and I have had a bit of issues with bought time that they just, they're fine the first year and then they just don't really like it. And I would like to have them in the beds. So we'll see. So I'm growing quite a few per module here and to see if any of them germinate. I will be very positively surprised. I'm happy with that. We'll see. And uh, the last one is beetroot. So this is boltardy, which is a good one for sowing first thing in spring. It's uh, resistant to bolting, rising up the flower. Um, so beetroot is a bit different in that you can get multiple stems or seedlings from each uh, little seed. Uh, but you want to sow about four in each module. You're going to feel like that is a huge amount for these giant seeds, but it works really well. Look at that. It's a monster. Um, so we'll put that one in. <laughs> See what we get. And planting sowing depth is very usually very shallow is all you need. You don't want to bury things too deep. You just risk rotting and not before they germinate. If you think about it, things fall on the ground from the plant and it doesn't no one's there to cover it up or dig it down in a certain depth depth or whatever. So um, yeah, so then I just take some compost. Oh, and I completely forgot to uh, label these up. Better do this before I cover them up. Well, I have no idea what it was I just sewed. Me... Yeah, always label, otherwise, <laughs> yeah, things go bad. Not the best composters, but it works. And then I'll just sprinkle a bit on top. You basically just want just to cover the seeds a bit. And that's all you need. And then I like to just firm it down. And that just means that the seeds are in contact with the compost. And that should aid with germination. Excellent. So then for water, 
I just plonk this thing uh, into a tray of water so then it waters it from below and then I don't water it again until I see that there's there's dry on top of the compost it changes color so you can see it quite clearly and but you shouldn't need it um, before the seedlings appear and even after that I water from below because I just find I just kill the seedlings basically I don't know what is with me I just can't water seedlings but um, yeah there you have it so I'm gonna um, wait for these to germinate and I'm gonna plant them out when I don't know, they'll take different length of time, but um, the beetroot will probably go out first because they're going to be really quick out of the blocks and then you can plant them out when they are quite small. So I might do another little video about that. Um, and um, the... Uh, <laughs> I kind of wait until they're... I, I don't know, maybe around three true leaves or so. Uh, three to five true leaves. It's hard to say with the parsleys and, and those things, especially when they're multi sown but it's kind of a, you can kind of tell when they've filled up, the roots have filled up these little uh, modules and they're just ready to go. And the sooner they go out, the sooner they get growing. So don't hang about basically. So yeah, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions and um, happy growing.